Okay, we're going to do a review of polar graphing, the things that I think you need to know for BC calculus. <coughs> uh, first, a quick blitz on how to graph polar points. Where's my cursor? Um, there we go. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, you have R theta. R tells you how far to go from the origin, and theta is your direction angle. So when you're graphing these, you start by finding the angle, which this first example is 2 pi over 3. And the angle 2 pi over 3, we start at 0. 2 pi over 3 is right here in the 60 degree direction. So I will label this angle as 2 pi over 3. And then I simply extend out in that direction three units. So 1, 2, 3. And there is the point, and I guess I'll call that point A. Uh, negative 4, negative pi over 6. Again, you start by finding the angle. Uh, negative pi over 6. Positive pi over 6 is up here, which means negative pi over 6 is going to be extending backwards 30 degrees. So there's negative pi over 6. Um, now this one I actually gave you a negative r, and if you end up with a negative r, that means you run away from your direction angle. So I'm actually going to take this angle, extend it backwards, and we will actually run away from negative pi over 6. So I'll actually go this way, 1, 2, 3, 4 units. <coughs> and that will be point B. Um, by the way, it also turns out that that angle, if you're going negative pi over 6, that's the same angle as 5 pi over 6. And you could have also called point B positive for 5 pi over 6. So there are multiple ways you can name the exact same point in polar coordinates. All right, so there's some graphing, um, there's some graphing points anyway. These are the equations you use to convert between polar and rectangular equations and coordinates. Uh, I'm not going to go over any examples of these. This should be a review for y'all. Um, x equals r cosine, y equals r sine. The way I keep those straight is cosine is always associated with the x-axis, and that's going to be uh, a repeating theme in this video. Y and sine are always correlated. Um, in the unit circle, the y coordinate gives you the sine value, so that's how I keep those two straight. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. It's really just to play on the Pythagorean theorem. Those are the three big ones. Those are the three big ones. If you can remember those three, these two on the bottom are just offshoots of those. You could divide r sine theta and r cosine theta. The r's cancel to give you tangent theta, and you get y over x. And if you square root both sides, you get r equals the root of x squared plus y squared. So if you could just remember those top three, I think you will be fine. <sighs> Moving on. Okay, graphing, and this is where it gets a little bit more complex. I'm going to spend a little more time on the graphing. Uh, first, the simple stuff, circles. Uh, my first graph is, um, the first type of circle is r equals some number, which is simply a circle centered at the origin with a radius of whatever the number is. So if r equals 4, that means we're just going to draw a circle with radius 4 starting at the origin. Um, let's see, I want it to be a, let's do a red circle. So, um, wow, that's not quite what I wanted. Let's see, why is it filling? Oh, geez, I'm a stupid head. No fill. Ah, oh, geez. Hang on. All right. I think I got my circle working right. Um, so now I'll have a circle. Ah, oh, geez. It's got a white fill. What the heck? It didn't say it was going to fill. Anyway, okay. So it's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 4. And we'll pretend you can see through that circle. That's quite annoying. I didn't tell you to fill. See, there's no fill color. No fill color. Whatever. All right. Um, okay, so there's the first circle. That one's pretty simple. Uh, two other types of circles are a number times sine theta and a number times cosine theta. And the way you graph those, uh, sine theta is associated with the y-axis. So if it's 3 sine theta, uh, your circle starts at the origin, and then it goes up to 3 on the y-axis. And this is your circle. I'm just going to freehand this one since apparently the circle drawing tool is stupid. Whatever. Okay, pretend that's a circle. But that's what that circle looks like. Uh, if it's a sine theta, if it's a cosine theta, same principle, only you use the x-axis. So it's going to start at the origin, and it's negative 2 cosine, which means I need to go to negative 2 on the x, because cosine and x-axis are closely related or associated with each other. And this is the circle for negative 2 cosine theta goes through the origin and extends to that coordinate on the x-axis. 
So those are your three circles. Going on to more complex stuff, roses. These are probably the most complex of the polar graphs I'm going to cover today. Um, you have two forms, A sine B theta and A cosine B theta. A tells you how long the petal is. Um, so maybe I can color code this. Let's see, highlighter. Um, A is the length of the petal. And B tells you how many petals you have. And you need to be careful because it is a different rule if B is odd or if B is even. Um, so if B is odd, that's exactly how many petals you have. If B is even, you will double that to determine how many petals you, are, you have. And then I like to use this term. I set, call it finding the long R. And uh, whether it's a sine or a cosine graph determines where the first petal is placed. And I use a method called finding the long R. Uh, if it is a cosine one, it's very simple because if cosine, I should have put this on here, if it's R equals a cosine B theta, um, the first petal is on the x-axis. So if you could remember that, if it's cosine, the first petal is on the x-axis. If it's sine, it's a little bit more complicated. Your first petal is actually floating up in the first quadrant somewhere, and we're going to find out how to get exactly what that angle is. So we'll do a couple of rose graphs. Uh, first one is 3 cosine 2 theta. Um, okay, in this case, my B is even, which means we actually will have to double that to get four petals. Um, and 3 is how long the petal length is. Okay, and if it's cosine, remember the cosine ones, their, long, their first petal is on the x-axis. So I'm going to have my very first petal going out 3 units in the x, um, or in the 0 radian or 0 degree direction. And there is petal number 1. We're not going to wobble over the width of the petal. Um, and then if there are four petals, they will divide evenly around the circle. If you want to kill it dead, you could say there are 360 degrees um, in that first rotation around the coordinate axes. And there are four petals, so each petal is 90 degrees apart, um, which means we will have one petal going out to three in each direction. Um, not exactly pretty, but they all are a length of three. One, two, three, and one, two, three. So there's the first one. Cosine ones are a little bit easier. Sine's a little bit more complicated. Uh, if you look at this sine one, um, there are three petals. That is an odd number, so we do not double that. Three petals, and they are four units long. So there's the length. Okay, now to get my very first petal, I use what's called finding the long R. And what I mean by that is I think about sine, and I think, okay, I know my longest R is going to be 4. My longest petal, the very tip of my petal, is going to be 4 units away. And I think, okay, how can I make this 4? And, well, that happens if I can make sine of 3 theta equal to 1. So let's go over here and let's see how can I make sine of 3 theta equal to 1. I'm trying to find that point that's on the very tip of my petal, the longest length or the, the biggest length of R. And sine of any angle is going to equal 1 whenever that angle is pi over 2. So if I can make sine of pi over 2 equal to 1, well my angle in here is 3 theta, so really my goal is to make 3 theta equal to 1 and I'm going to have my long R, when you divide both sides by 3, at pi over 6. So I try to find out what gives me my, my largest R, in this case that would be 4, and that's when sine is equal to 1. And so my goal is to make this angle 3 theta equal to pi over 2 because sine of pi over 2 is 1. So I just kind of killed that dead and repeated myself. But uh, my very first pedal, I need to go up in a direction of pi over 6. So there's my pi over 6. And then I need to extend 4 units in that direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there is my first petal for, for sine of 3 theta. Then to get the remaining petals, there are 360 degrees all the way around the coordinate plane there. 
um, and there are three pedals, so each pedal is going to be 120 degrees apart. Um, generally in calculus we don't think about degrees, we use everything in radians, however in this case it's a lot easier to do degrees. Um, six, pi over 6 is the same thing as 30 degrees, so if I move another 120 degrees, my next pedal is going to end up at 5 pi over 6, right here. And so I will go four units out that way towards 5 pi over 6. It's kind of an ugly pedal, but whatever. And then if I add another 120, see I'm at 150 right now, plus 120 is 270. So my last pedal is going to go down four units this way. And so there is our graph of 4 sine 3 theta. <coughs> ah, this one's getting longer than I wanted to. I was hoping to keep this under 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, well, so much for that. Okay, the last ones, cardioids and limosons, uh, they're in the form A plus or minus B cosine theta or sine theta. Uh, if A and B are the same, you have a cardioid, and the general shape of a cardioid is it hits the origin, and it does this general shape. Now, it can be oriented in any way. Um, this could be rotated, whoops, that way. Um, where the butt part of it is facing to the left, uh, or it could be facing up or down, but that's the general shape. It kind of comes to a cusp on the origin, and then it, it loops down and looks kind of like a heart, hence the name cardioid. At least that's how I remember it. A limousine with a loop starts off looking like a cardioid, but then it comes through the origin and comes back and loops like this. Um, and you have four points. You have one point that gives you the tip of the loop, um, and a limousine with a loop looks like this. A limousine without a loop. A loop. Um, sometimes they have dimples, sometimes they don't, but it's going to have four points in each of the four directions, and one of those four points is going to be a lot closer to the origin than the other three, and that's going to be this top point in this case. So those are your three shapes. Uh, I'm very bad at memorizing these rules about A being less than B or greater than B and all that, so I'm going to show you real quick how I do this, and hopefully I can knock this out fairly quickly. Um, let's start with 2 plus 2 cosine theta. The way I graph these is I remember the three general shapes, and I remember the orientation of these four points. Notice I highlighted four points on each of those three shapes. And what I'll do is I will actually make an R theta table. And I plug in to this R theta table the four sexy angles, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. And 360 is the same as 0. Um, so here I'm plugging into cosine. Cosine of 0 is 1. 2 plus 2 times 1 is 4. Uh, cosine of 90 is 0, so 2 plus 2 times 0 is 2. Cosine of 180 is negative 1, so 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. And cosine of 270 again is 0, so 2 times 0 plus 2 is 2. And then what I have there is four points that I can quickly graph, and I will look at the orientation of those four points. Um, so I need to go in the theta, in the 0 direction, four units, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'll plot a point. Then in the 90 degree direction, two units, 1, 2. In the 180 degree direction, I don't go anywhere, so I'm going to stay right at zero. And then two units in the 270 degree direction. And I look at those four points, and I have three lined up right here. This one's a cardioid. It's going to come up, cusp at the origin, come back down, and do that. <coughs> Uh, and I'm going to very quickly complete the tables for these other two. I'm going to pause the video while I do that. All right, there we go. So I, I plugged in my four acute angles, the 90 degree angles, and I got these points. And what happens when you plot these points, uh, so this one, 4 minus 2 sine theta, I need to go four units in the zero direction. I need to go two units in the 90 degree direction, four units in the 180 degree direction, and then six units in the 270. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I look at those four points, and it looks like it's going to be this one, the limousine without a loop. I've got four points in all four directions, and one of those points is a lot closer to the origin, so that's where the flatter end, wow, that was bad. That's where the flatter end of this limousine would be. It's going to go all the way down, wow. Whoa, geez, good Lord have mercy. Let me try this. I'm just going to pause it until I get this right. There. 
And then finally, 2 plus 3 cosine theta, 5 units in the zero direction. Ah, stupid announcements. Whatever. 3, 4, 5. 2 units in the 90 degree direction. Negative 1 in the 180. Now that means you run away from 180, 1 unit. And then 2 units in the 270 degree direction. And this is going to be the one with the loop. Now that point is the tip of the loop. When you have two points on the same side of the origin like that, it comes through the origin, loop, come back through the origin, and then there. So this video ended up being a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but um, that is a blitz of everything polar that you need to know going into calculus, and then we will add to this once we learn more calculus techniques.